The equity risk premium, as I've noted in my other data sets on equity risk, is the price of risk in the market. Now, I compute that obviously for the US with historical data and an implied premium, but I want to talk about computing equity risk premiums for the rest of the world. Why not just because you're going to be assessing or valuing companies in the rest of the world, but because any company that has exposure to the rest of the world, you need to know the equity risk premium of the geographies you operate in. So let's step back with what I think should be a fairly non-debatable issue. There are different amounts of risk you face in operating in different countries. Some countries are more risky than others for lots of different reasons. One is exposure to violence and war. The more exposed you are, the riskier you are as a country. The second is political systems, though we can debate which one is riskier, an authoritarian one or a democratic one. The quality of the legal system, because after all, if you're operating as a business, you need protection for your property, and to the extent that the legal system doesn't work well, you're unprotected. And it even depends on where in the life cycle your economy is. If you're a growing economy, your risks lie in the future. You're far more risky than if you're a mature economy. So some countries are clearly riskier than others. Now, that said, though, that doesn't mean you should be adding an extra premium for operating in those countries. And until the mid-80s, the argument was, if you're a multinational operating in 50 or 60 countries, risk averages out. So if you have a country where something bad is happening, there'll be another country where something good happens, things average out. And that was the argument used to the mid-80s for why companies could use the same cost of equity around the world, assuming you operate in the same currency. Now that's broken down as the correlation across countries has risen. Take a look during crises. If you notice, it's not just the US markets going down, it's the rest of the world. In fact, the correlation during crisis periods in this century has been close to 95, 96, 97% countries moved together. What does that mean? Well, country risk is no longer diversifiable. In other words, you have no choice but to estimate equity risk premiums by country, giving higher equity risk premiums to riskier countries and lower equity risk premiums to safer ones. Now, that's what this data set contains, is my estimates of the equity risk premium by country. But I want to take you through the process of how I make this estimate, because it's mine and I could be wrong and you're welcome to disagree with me. I start by estimating an equity risk premium for a mature market. And when I tell you how I do it, you're already going to start the pushback. I estimate a mature market premium by estimating an equity risk premium for the S&P 500. And I do that at the start of every month and at the start of every year, obviously, if it's at the start of every month. Now, why do I use the S&P 500? Because to compute an implied equity risk premium, which is what I use as my starting point, I need numbers that are more easily available for the S&P 500 than any other market. So if I estimate an implied equity risk premium for the S&P 500 5%, that becomes my estimate of an equity risk premium for a mature market. Now you can push back in two directions. One is you can argue that the S&P 500 includes companies that are not just US exposed, but are global companies. Fair enough. In fact, about 10% of the revenues for a typical S&P 500 company come from emerging markets. There might be an emerging market component. The other pushback might be, why just the US? Why not Germany, Japan? I don't have a theoretical reason for why not. It's just that estimating the implied premium for the DAX or the, Cent, um, or, uh, or the Nikkei is much more difficult than the S&P 500. So my starting point is the US equity risk premium as a mature market premium. Then, you know, I come up with a generic measure of a mature market and my generic measure is very lazy. I look at sovereign ratings for countries, and if your rating is AAA, I assume you're a mature market. Again, you can push back, but I wanted to go with the lowest cost measure of coming up with a mature market. So every AAA rated country in the world is going to get the same equity risk premium as the US, Germany, uh, Australia, you know, the Scandinavian countries, you know, Singapore. So my U.S. equity risk premium becomes the equity risk premium for those countries. Those countries, in a sense, have no additional country risk premium. Now, for the rest of the world, which is not AAA rated, I have to estimate an additional risk premium. There are two ways I can do this. One is to do what many bankers do, which is take the default spread for that country, either based on sovereign ratings for the country or on the sovereign CDS market, and add it to the U.S. equity risk premium. So my equity risk premium for the U.S. is 5%, and the default spread for a country is 2%, I'd add the two to the 5%, come up with an equity risk premium of 7%.
The second is, and this is my preference, is a scaled up measure of the default spread, where I start with the default spread and use the logic of, hey, that is what I would charge for investing in bonds issued by that country. But to the extent that equity is riskier than bonds, I'm going to scale up that default spread for the additional risk of equity. And you're saying, how am I going to do that? I'll talk a little bit about the mechanics I use, but that country risk premium is the default spread scaled up. So if equities are one and a half times more risky than bonds, a 2% default spread will become a 3% country risk premium, which if added to the 5% that I have with my US premium, will give me an equity risk premium for that market of 8%. Let's talk a little bit about default spreads. Now, there are three ways you can get default spreads. One is if you have government bonds issued by a country, you know, in dollars or euros, you can compare that rate to the UST bond rate, but only if it's in, in you can't compare a Brazilian DRI bond rate to a UST bond rate, but a Brazilian dollar bond rate. For instance, this is from, you know, from July 2022, 6.26% dollar bond rate, you sub compare the T bond rate of 3.8%, gives you a default spread of 2.46%. So for countries which have risk but have issued bonds in dollars or euros, you can compare to either the UST bond rate for dollar rates or the German euro bond rate for euro rates to get a risk-free rate. Unfortunately, this can be done for about 15 to 20 countries and beyond that you run into a brick wall. The second is to use what's called the sovereign CDS market. Sovereign CDS market is a market where you can go buy insurance against default. It's a market-based estimate of the default spread and as you can see, I have CDS spreads for Brazil, Indonesia, Hungary, Nigeria, which I can use as proxies for the default spread. So I can use government bonds if they're in dollars or euros. I can use a sovereign CDS market. Sovereign CDS market is now available. Sovereign CDS spreads are now available for about 75 countries. That's good. But there are about 170 countries overall that I need equity risk premiums for. So my third approach kind of completes the picture. If I can get a sovereign rating for your country, and there are about 150 plus countries with sovereign ratings, I can give you a default spread given the rating. So if you're, for instance, a BA2 rated country in July of 2022, a BA2 rating country had a default spread of about 3.22%. You're saying, how do you come up with this lookup table? By looking at government bonds and sovereign CDS spreads, and then creating a lookup table by matching them up to ratings. So you can use government bonds based on dollars, you can use sovereign CDS spreads, or you can use ratings-based spreads. Because I want to get comparable numbers for 160 countries plus, I use the ratings-based spread approach. In other words, I take the sovereign rating, the local currency rating for every country, and come up with a default spread based on that rating. Now a little bit about how to capture the fact that equities tend to be riskier than bonds. In a perfect world, I'd look up the standard deviation, the equity index in the country, the standard deviation of the country bond issued by that country, and look at that ratio. Unfortunately, though, there are relatively few countries where government bonds are widely traded. So this approach kind of runs into a brick wall of how do you estimate this ratio when in most countries, observing the standard deviation of the country bond is almost impossible to do. So here's what I do instead. I use a bludgeon. What do I mean by a bludgeon? I compute one relative ratio that I apply across all countries. And to compute that ratio, I look up two standard deviations. The first is the standard deviation in an emerging market equity index. Okay. The second is a standard deviation in an emerging market government bond ETF. They're both indices. And I look at the ratio of the standard deviation of emerging market equities. I apply that ratio, let's say it's 1.4 to every company's default spread. I know it's a bludgeon, but the alternative is you're gonna get stuck trying to get numbers you cannot get. And that scaled up country risk premium is reported in conjunction with the equity risk premium. Incidentally, for the, you know, I offer a second option for those countries, the 75 countries where there is a sovereign CDS spread where instead of scaling up the country default spread by this scale relative ratio, I look up the sovereign CDS spread for the country and apply this, this scaling up ratio to it. So both numbers are reported in this data set. So if you're wondering why there's a proliferation of equity risk premiums, again, let me repeat. The country risk premium is the additional equity risk premium I'm getting for the country, either based on the default, rating-based default spread or the sovereign CDS spread. 
the equity risk premium you see for the country is that country risk premium plus the U.S. equity risk premium, which is the mature market premium. And that is the secret to how I get the equity risk premiums by country. There are a few countries, though, this data set that don't have a rating or a sovereign CDS spread. They're frontier markets, markets like Syria, Sudan, North Korea. For those countries, I cheat. I look up a score called the political risk service score for that country, try to find other countries with similar scores, which have ratings and equity risk premiums, and report the average equity risk premium for those countries as the equity risk premium for Syria or North Korea. So as you look through this data set and you look at the equity risk premiums, please don't make it a black box where you just plug the numbers in. Now think about what I'm doing. Disagree with me if need me. Replace my approach with, with, with a modified version that you're more comfortable with. But I don't claim to have the answers, but this is my best effort on computing equity risk premiums for a large number of countries. I hope you found this session useful. and Thank you very much for listening.